Hello, grade nine math class. Welcome back to another lecture. Uh, today we have fractions into decimals. So we are going to turn fractions into decimals. I'm going to show you two particular ways uh, to do this, two strategies. Um, one is more straightforward than the other. So uh, let's look at the first example we have, and that's one fifth. So one over five. And what we're going to do first, the first strategy, the easiest strategy, is to try to turn um, this into a fraction where the base is 1 or 10 or 100 or 1,000 because it's then, then it's going to be very easy for us to move a decimal around. I'll show you. If we have 1 fifth, some of you may already know the answer to this, but if you have 1 fifth and you multiply the top and the bottom, by 2, so you're multiplying the whole fraction by 2, uh, you get 2 tenths, and those are equivalent fractions. And I've turned it into something that has uh, a, a 10 on the bottom, which is one of the couple that we're looking for. And when I have a 10 on the bottom, it means I can take the decimal point and move it over one spot because it's a 10. There's one zero. So if I had 2, and usually there is a decimal here after just a normal 2, we'd move that decimal place over, and the answer for 1 fifth is 0 0.2. We moved that decimal over and we got 0 0.2. So that is uh, the decimal that 1 fifth represents. Uh, if we look at the next example, we have 3 out of 13, and that's a little bit trickier. Uh, you cannot easily turn that bottom number, the denominator, into one of these four numbers. So you're going to have to um, long divide. You're going to do long division this time. So let's write that out. Uh, it is 13 on the outside and 3 on the inside of the box. Let's move this up a little bit. Inside of the box. So we see 13 does not go into 3. We already knew that. That's why we're doing this. So we're going to add a 0. And when we add a zero to long division, we add a decimal. So then we can see how many times 13 goes into 30. 13 goes into 30 two times, like up to 26, because 39 is above 30. So that's two. So it's now 0.2. And with these questions, we're always going to go to three decimal places. So we're going to go ahead and subtract these. It's four. And we add another zero. We know that 13 goes into 40 three times. I already said that 13 times 3 is 39. So we're going to then subtract those. We're left with 1, and we put a 3 up here. We're going to bring another 0 down to get one more decimal place. And 13 does not go into 10. It goes into 10 zero times. We don't want to go any further. So 2.30, sorry, 0 0.230 is the answer for the decimal that 3 out of 13 represents. Okay, so you can either turn it into uh, a base, a denominator, that has 1, 10, 100, or 1,000, or you can do long division. Let's do a couple more uh, problems. All right. First off, we have 54 out of 100, and that is an easy one because it already has a base that we like, a couple of zeros. So if we started with 54 and the decimal would be here because we have two zeros. We are going to move the decimal over one, two times to get 0.54. The decimal uh, 0.54 represents 54 out of 100, that fraction. Let's go to 11 out of 25. 11 out of 25. Now, you could do long division for this one, or you could recognize that four times 25 gets you 100. So if you multiply both the top and the bottom by 4, you're going to get a fraction that we are able to work with again. Um, has 1, 10, 100, or 1,000 for a base. So let's multiply both by 4, and we get 44. 11 times 4 is 44. 25 times 4 is 100. So that's 44 out of 100. We can just go ahead and write 0.44 for a decimal. 11 out of 25 is the same as 0.44. Let's go to the next one. So we got room for one more. Let's do 687 out of 1,000. 
687 out of 1,000. It's a denominator that we like, so we're just going to move the decimal place over 3. 1, 2, 3. So that would be 0.687 for a decimal. And we're going to do the last one here. We've got 14 out of 13 this time. Okay, so that means that 14 goes on the outside and 13 goes on the inside. We already know that 14 does not go into 13. That's why we're here. So we're going to add a zero. And when we add a zero like that, we're going to add a decimal. Everything after this is going to be a decimal. So now we have to figure out how many times 14 goes into 130. Now, I think right away that 140, so I'll write this over here, 140 times 10, sorry, 14 times 10 is equal to 140, right? So if I do one less than that, like 14 times nine, that would be 126. And that fits into 130. So 126 would go in nine times. So we start with 0.9. We're gonna go ahead and subtract these. I'll do it quick. It's just four and we'll add a zero. Bring another zero down. We're gonna do another decimal point. So 14 goes into 40 twice, 28, right? Because the next multiple of 14 is uh, 42. That's above 40. So that means, what did I say? Two is the next decimal place. And we're going to subtract these. Uh, we would get 12. Okay, and we're gonna add one more zero because we want to get the decimal place. 120. Um, okay, I already know that 14, I just did this for this one up here. Uh, 14 times nine equals 126. So then if I do one more down, 14 times eight, I should get, uh, let's see, 112. I get 112, that's the next one down. I subtracted 14 from 126. And you saw me struggling a little bit. Um, and that works. So 112 would go here and we know 14 uh, times eight gets us that. We don't really care what happens after that because we have our three decimal places. We'd be okay to write 13 out of 14 is equal to 0.928. So you can get three decimals or more every single time uh, when you're doing a problem like this. But all we're going to ask for is three. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.